प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारिये हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे घनश्याम महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी लॉर्ड स्वामी नारायण द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूजिपाद गुरु जी and all of you devotees my humble jay swami narayan today's lecture is very special today's lecture is a tribute to pujya yogi swami a saint in our sant mandal in pujya guruji sant mandal who passed away on february 13th 2014 Last Saturday a tribute assembly was held at Sri Swamiran Loya Dham Mandir here in New Jersey on behalf of Swami the whole assembly his qualities his virtues were sung but today i have a lecture as well as myself puja Rushi Vallabh Swami will be also giving a lecture right after myself on Swami's life, virtues, his foundation to his greatness. So first, I want to speak to you about Swami's foundation to his success. In such a short span of time, of only seven years, Swami made a great achievement in his life. In such a short span of time, Pujya Guruji said, a saint who has lived in a saint life for 70 to 80 years, he's achieved in an eight-year span. This is what makes him great. And that's why we're going to learn about him today. Now just like how every building has a foundation in the spiritual life there's also a foundation which is needed in order to build a skyscraper Pujya Swami's foundation was very special and it is a foundation that each and every spiritual aspirant needs in order to success to in order to be successful in the religious life now before i get started with that first i want to tell you that if one wants to become a doctor he needs a professor if one wants to become a lawyer he needs a professor if one wants to learn singing he needs a singing instructor meaning in any kind of activity or any kind of thing one performs to succeed to progress one needs a guide or a teacher now in the spiritual world the teacher is the ekantik satpurush or a god realized self realized saint now such a saint is so valuable to that spiritual aspirant that he is pretty much the supporter of his spiritual existence you can say i can say off of my experience and also i can say off of other people's experiences that that guide meaning that saint that satpurush 
is put into such a high position for that spiritual aspirant that at a certain point, Bhagwan becomes secondary and that Ekantik Sadpurush becomes primary. Why? Because in Gunatyan Swami's Vato, Swami says that the devotees of the saint, the God realized saint, are greater than the devotees of Bhagwan. How so? Well, one time in the Darbar of Dada Kachar, Sri Jimaraj was sitting underneath the Nim tree. There, many, many devotees from far away came to have darshan of Bhagwan. So they sat right in front of Bhagwan. Bhagwan asked them, How are you doing? Is everything okay? Your financial life? And they inquired and they answered Bhagwan's questions. But after five minutes, they've, they've traveled such a long, time, a long period, such a long journey. For days and days, they've been coming to visit Bhagwan. But after just five minutes of darshan, Bhagwan said, go and sit next to Muktanan Swami. Go and sit next to Gunatinan Swami. Why? Because through saints, one can realize God. Those devotees had darshan of God, but they did not know who God was. But when they went and had the association of Sadguru Muktanan Swami, Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami, Sadguru Brahmanan Swami, Sadguru Gopan Swami, then through them, they realize the true greatness and glory of God. In the same way, Ever since Puja Yogi Swami was born into this religion, Puja Guruji was a primary element in his life. Now, for the foundation, Puja Yogi Swami established Puja Guruji as his primary anchor. But for the foundation to develop, there are two things that Puja Swami had in Puja Guruji that made him excel and that made his foundation stronger than ever. Number one was faith in Guruji and number two was affection for Guruji. Now, before I get deeper into that, water, otherwise known as H2O, is the most fundamental primary source of life on earth and in this universe. Universe, Where there is water found, most definitely one can say that life will be found there. Because for life to be supported, water is essential. Now, the formula for water is H2O. H2 means two hydrogen atoms and O means one oxygen atom. When combined, they make water. Now, the reason why I'm giving you this example is because I want to use this example to help you understand Pujuswami's foundation. Hydrogen represents faith in Guruji and oxygen represents Affection for Guruji. Now, number one, faith. Religion is faith, you can say. Without faith, there is no religion. That would be called science, because science needs some kind of proof in front of it. Science needs some kind of analysis, experiment to be proven. But faith is blind. It can't be seen, yet it's there. And faith is something that is stronger than science, than any kind of materialistic pleasure on this earth, or anything. How so? Because it helps one attain Akshardham. Now in Sarangpur 18th chapter, Sri Jimar says 
that when a person who has faith encounters a true ekantic saint and establish faith in his words, then noble virtues like gnan, vairagya, wisdom are all established in that person and vicious virtues like lust, anger, greed are all eliminated. This is what faith can do. In Puja Swami's life, faith was everywhere. All he talked about was Puja Guruji and his greatness. Even to the extent, whereas when he was in the hospital, first, let me explain Puja Swami's incident. Puja Yogi Swami was involved in an accident where he got burned. About 70% of his body was burned to the limit of third degree. Now, doctors say that a person who is burned to the third degree, up to 40%, can be saved. But a person above 40% is very hard to save, or it's nearly impossible. Now, Puja Swami was burned and he was hospitalized immediately. Swami lived there in the hospital in a glass cabin for one whole month. But whenever great saints, whenever Puja Guruji, whenever devotees came to visit Swami, all he would talk about is Guruji's greatness. He would say that remember Guruji in each and every one of our activities. Through that, you'll become beyond this Maya. He preached about Guruji continuously, non-stop. You can say that was his fuel that made him strong even in such an adverse circumstance or such an adverse time. Now, after one month and four days, Pujaswami passed away because it was too much damage to his body and also his blood was infected. But to look on a positive side, let's reflect on his virtues. Let's reflect on his greatness and glory and learn from that. So as I was talking about, hydrogen, that represents faith in Guruji. Pujusami had tons of faith. On the other, other hand, oxygen. Oxygen represents affection. Now, along with faith, affection is definitely needed. Along with hydrogen, oxygen needs to be joined to make water. Why I am using this water example is because just like how water is a found fundamental, you can say, life element for all life to exist, in the same way, in the re religious life, faith and affection for the Akantic saint are two elements that need or that one needs to survive in religion. So oxygen is representing affection. Now in the Vachnamrut, Gadara first chapter, 54th Vachnamrut, Bhagwan says that the gates of liberation can be opened by developing affection for such an ekantic saint who possesses dharma, bhakti, gnan, and vairagya. Swami also had this attribute. Affection is pretty much a sign where one constantly remembers whoever one has affection for. Even in the hospital, as well as before the hospital, Puja Swami remembered Guruji continuously. Now, I'm just making the foundation for all of you so that when Puja Rushivalab Swami delivers his lecture, you'll be able to understand Puja Yogi Swami's greatness even further. 
So, for example, suppose you were in the desert and you were thirsty and there was no water, no food, and you've been traveling for days and days. Now, when you see an oasis, wouldn't you run to the oasis? Of course you would. Anyone would. Why? Because one is thirsty. One needs water. One knows that one needs water to survive. When you reach the oasis, oasis, you right away start drinking the water without even seeing if it's clean, filtered, dirty, polluted, nothing. All you want to do is take the water, sip it into your mouth to hydrate your body again. In the same way, these two elements play the form of water in an oasis. For millions and millions of lives, we've been traveling birth and death, birth and death, in different species, in different human bodies, yet we have not reached our destination. We have not reached the exact position we're, we're supposed to. Due to that, the cycle of life and death continue. But if we reach an oasis and if we drink the water, then we would become hydrated and we would survive. In the same way, when we encounter such a saint and develop faith and affection for him, then we become hydrated in our spiritual life. That's why these two elements were a primary center point, a focal point for Puja Yogi Swami's life. Now, I've spoken about Puja Yogi Swami's foundation, but now, furthermore, We'll have Pujya Rushivalab Swami speak about the skyscraper he made after developing the foundation, his virtues, his greatness, his character, his noble behavior. And through that, you'll be able to understand that Pujya Swami was no ordinary person, but a liberated soul or a mukta on this earth. Bhagwan has sent him for such a short period of time. But in such a short period of time, he did so many things, not only to help society, but also he developed and had so many virtuous qualities which made him excel. So, in the end, after developing such a foundation in the spiritual life, one can build a skyscraper. And in order for t to do that, I'm going to introduce Puja Rushiwalab Swami to come and give a discourse about the character of Puja Yogi Walab Swami. Jai Swami Narayan. Sharamaniyadarsanam Mandaha Saruchirana Nambujam Pujitam Surunaro Tamir Muda Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Sri Hari Krishna Maharajanije 
His Supreme Personality of God, Hitler, Swami Narayan. Puja Guruji, all of the saints, all of you the devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Today we are going to discuss on the spiritual life of Puja Yogi Swami. We know that Yogi Swami is now no more with us, whether we believe or not, but this is the fact. But still, this is not the full fact. This is only a half fact. Because Yogi Swami is also present over here in this world. Because he forever present he forever remain present in this world through his virtuous life through his countless saintliness there are so many virtues he had acquired by propitiating his guruji his life is only capable to give us the searchlight on the path of liberation. If we study and if we observe his life, we can get so many things. There are so many hidden aspects, what we can say it, the secrets of his successful spiritual life. If you want to get some inspiration to grow your business, to develop your business, or if you want to be a good businessman, then definitely you have to study the life of Steve Jobs and other industrialists who have got success in the business world. And if, as we are aspirant, spiritual aspirant. So we have to do one thing and that is to study the life of Puja Yogi Swami because he is the very good character for us so that we can gain so many inspiration from his life. If we have some if we have such vision to acquire to pursue some good qualities from anybody, then we definitely attain so many good things from anybody's life. And if we can get good things from anybody's life, then why, why not from the life of Puja Yogi Swami? No doubt, he has attained the top position of saintliness in very short period of his spiritual life. He born on 28th March 1982 and on the same day of 2005 he had dedicated all his to the feet of lotus feet of Puja Guruji and 2nd November 2006 he got a Bhagavati Diksa and become a Sant. After getting Bhagavati Diksa, after becoming a Sant, he has sold the society, he had sold, he had even tolerated so many hard things for serving the society. There are so many incidents in his life of tolerance, but today we have no such time to describe all those incidents. But what is the main power behind his tolerance, 
his attitude of forgiveness his attitude to show all those people who even not satsangi these all such virtues he had but behind that behind those virtue he has three points according to my intellect i have found these three points behind his success the success of this saintliness success of this path of saintliness divinity second one is obedience third one is transparency but before describing that before describing these virtues these three points the first thing in this spiritual stage is to attain spiritual master he has desire remain in his heart before attaining guruji and so one day god had decided to give him his form in the form of guruji and after attaining this form of god once he had asked pujya guruji how can i please you how can you propitiate with me then guruji say become a son then i will be pleased on you after becoming a son he had never forgot these things to become a son and that's why only and only to propitiate his master only and to propitiate his guruji pujya yogi swami day and night practicing for attaining saintliness that's why today we remember his virtue his life and not only for today but he forever remains in our heart god is also says in 25th which number grade last chapter one should certainly have the following desire may god be complete with me no doubt we know that spiritual aspirant should not keep any kind of desire in his mind except the form of god but still god himself says here that one should certainly have such kind of desire to please god and in this according to this vachanamrut yogism is life also goes with the vachanamrut and not only he had asked but he had attained real pleasure pleasure from the heart of guruji from the heart of santo from the heart of devotees and finally he had also acquired the pleasure divine pleasure from the heart of supreme personality bhagwan swami narayan after attaining this bhagwat diksha he had started to serve satsang by the grace and divine order of guruji in vadodara gurukul while staying there he had acquired these all qualities but behind all his saintliness there are three factors first one is divinity he understood in his life the real glory of god real glory of guru real glory of santo real glory of devotees 
how we understand the devotees and all the other things he had pursued this quality from the ninth vachanamrut of karyani in this vachanamrut god says one who real, realizes the glory of god looks upon even animals trees shrubs etc which have come into contact with god as equivalent to devas if that is so what can be said of those people who are engaged in the bhakti of god abiding by religious vows and chanting the name of god this is what the motto of his life and after reading and understanding these divine words of god he had put those words in his life he saw everybody as a god as a form of god at least he understand he understood that god resides in everybody today with remembrance of his glorious life we also try we should try to acquire the same qualities in our life and that is why we have to understand the same divinity because this is not the fact but this is the words of god so we have to accept it why we cannot accept this fact we have understood, understood so many things in our life with uh, by listening so many kathas and so many scriptures but still this deficiency remain in our life in our mind our mind cannot accept this fact we can understand we can accept the truth that the ghost can enter in under body but we cannot en- we cannot accept this fact that god also can enter in the form of idol in the form of sadhu in the form of duty why because this is common human psychology but if we want to attain the supreme bliss of aksardham then we have to cross this wrong psychology we have to walk on the path on which yogi swami walked when the example is there in vachanamrut the fourth vachanamrut or panchala Sri Ji Maharaj says in that Vachanamrut that we all have darshan of sun god in the sky every day but by seeing the sun we cannot have the satisfaction in our heart that we have attained the darshan of god why because of our wrong psychology we have to change this misunderstanding if in any sun temple we stand before the idol of sun god we definitely bow bow down the, those image we definitely prostrate before that sun god but when we see in the sky the same sun god was there is there but still we have no conviction that this is the god in the same way while we are before the god before the idol of god in the temple we prostrate before the idol we prostrate before the form of that god but when we see or when we meet any spiritual leader any spiritual person 
has also the same qualities like that of God. But at that time, why we cannot understand this fact that this is the form of God? Even though the fact describing the Vachanamrut, Bhagavan Swami himself says that I forever resides in the eight type of idol as well as in the same way I also reside in the sun. So from today, with the memory of Puja Yogi Swami, let us start to acquire this quality in our life. No doubt, room cannot build in a day. We cannot acquire this quality in one day. But still, if we practice, if we remember these things in our mind daily, then one day definitely God will be pleased upon us and only due to His grace we can have such vision, such divine vision. And if we acquire divine vision, then we can see God everywhere. And by the person of God, we can feel divinity in our heart. Second point is obedience. Yogi Swami had not only asked his master what to do in this life, what to do in this way of spiritual spirituality, how I can attain this supreme bliss of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But after getting the right answer, he has started to walk on the walk with the words walk with the words of his Guruji. He never left any any command of Guruji. There are so many incidents in his life because he has trust, he has full trust, he has blind trust in the words of Pujya Guruji. So this quality also we have to acquire. We have trust in any in any person who even sign on the check. Check is not currency, we know. But only the piece of paper that not the not of hundred dollar or hundred rupees but still we have trust on the on that paper because of the sign that if we give this check in the bank I have hundred dollars or hundred rupees but we have no trust in the words of God in the words of Guru why if we have words, if we keep the words of Guruji, we will be attain peace definitely, without any question. Not only in this world, but also the beyond. Not only in this life, but also life after. Why? Because just as ghosts enter in somebody's body and speak, anything even speak in such manner or such a language even those person cannot understand similarly through guruji through the santo bhagwan swaminar himself says us instruct us he says you should do this and you should not do this and that's why we have to accept those divine words. Another thing is that Yogi Swami become an instrument of his Guruji. If he was said to do Katha, 
then he was ready to do katha when he was instructed to do thal for thakur ji and santo then he was ready to do that also when he was instructed to manage any utsav any festival he was also ready to do things without any question just as any electronic instrument even we have we all have the phone phone has no desire to call somebody and not the others for never says us that i'll call only to only mr a not to mr b he is ready to perform what you instruct him instruct it if you want to throw your phone phone cannot deny similarly in the life of yogi sai we can see the same thing without any question without any difficulty he always ready to perform he always ready to follow the commands of his guru ji not only these but in some cases even though the things are a uh, good management done by him but still he denied he said it is not i who had done this it is guru ji it is the grace of guru ji it is god who is behind this because when you call from your phone from from your iphone nobody can say that your iphone is calling the person who is talking with you on phone says that you have called him your phone your iphone is not talking with the other person and same way yogi swami many times says this example and says that it is not i who had done this work but it is guru ji and it is bhagwan who had done these all things this quality is also we have to accept we have to pursue this very very important virtue from the life of puja yogi swami because this virtue can help to understand the worship of god otherwise if this virtue is not in our life then some sometimes or some way we can understand our do worship i have make thought i have do this and i have done this all these things now third one is transparency in their any religious sect any way of any faith this thing is necessary for every disciple because if disciple disciple do not disciples do not explain anything to the guru then how can guru instruct his disciples when we approach doctor for cure our disease if we have wound in our right leg we have to show that leg to doctor the same place but 
if we deny to so the part of our body to doctors then how can he give us medicines similarly in spirituality the spiritual master is d- like doctor and disciples is like a patient as we all are patient we have to describe our faults our bad qualities or wild thoughts everything to our spiritual doctor so that he can give us medicines and when he will give us medicine then and then we can be healthy and if we will be healthy then we can walk we can progress on the path of spiritual on the path of liberation sometimes what happen if god or guruji has says us to do this and not to do this but by mistake or according to our bad nature if we perf- if you do those things and at the time if we do not say our master then what happen how can we progress on the path of liberation but if we describe our fault our mistakes before him then he will show us the another path another way just as we use navigator in our car if we forget to turn our car in first exit to reach our destination then navigator made a calculation for our destination and give us the another exit similarly if we forget to follow any commands of god or guruji and if we describe him if we ask him what to do now what i will do then he will show us the another way another exit to reach our destination these all things these all three qualities are the qualities of muktanand swami in the life of muktanand swami we can find these three things and as we are also belongs to muktanand swami yogi swami is also belongs to muktanand swami and that's why he had acquired the qualities like that of his guru muktanand swami when in the life of gurudev muktanand swami we observe these three qualities are the main force of his saintliness here unflinching faith unflinching conviction that i have attained the god in the form of my guru ramanand swami he believed his guru is the god this is not the wrong thing he was not an intellectual person he was not fool he was highly he was he was highly qualified person not only this but he was also a divine person who was coming over here from the divine abode of god akshardham he knows the supreme personality of godhead is bhagwan swami narayan but still even he knows all the he know all the things but still he firmly believed that his guru ramanand swami is the bhagwan himself and because of this thing he require the highest stage of saintliness and when bhagwan swami also desire to 
give any example of saintliness, then he definitely says that Bhaktanand Swami is the true saint. In the obedience, Muktanand Swami, after forgetting the instructions and all these things of three gurus in the search of true guru, when he met Raman and Swami, then he had done what Raman and Swami had instructed him. Even though he had renounced his home, his family, and this world for attaining eightfold celibacy. But after attaining Raman and Swami, when Raman and Swami had said him to said him to do farming, help to farm in Mudubai. Then, at the time, even though Muktanand Swami did not know how to farm, how to farming, how to plying, because he was the son of Brahmin, still, without any question, he had said to do those things also. He had not asked his guru that I'm, I was not here to do this thing. I was here only to attain celibacy. How can I attain celibacy by doing these things? But without any question, he had, accept, he had accepted the words of his Guruji. And that is why he has become eightfold celibate, perfect celibate. And due to his celibacy, Bhagwan Swaminarayan also stays with him in lodge. This is the qualities which we have to acquire in our life because we are also belongs to Muktanand Swami. We are also the disciples of Muktanand Swami. We have also attained Muktanand Swami in the form of Guruji. We have attained Adharan Swami in the form of Guruji. We have attained Supreme Personality of Godhead Bhagavan Swami in the form of Guruji. So we have to also accept those words of his divine mouth, the words which lead us on the path of liberation, the words which leads us direct to the lotus feet of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So on this day, let me pray, pray to our Maharaj, our Guruji, Puja Yogi Swami. Oh Maharaj, please source your mercy so that we can understand this path of liberation. We can understand you are present in the form of our Guruji. And that is why all the things, all the people, all the persons who ever come in the contact of our Guruji, those all things, those all persons are divine. We want to attain this understanding in your life. So please be merciful up upon me. That's it, Jai Swami Narayan. Hare Krishna Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swami Narayanam Nilakantham Bhaje Sri Hare Krishna Maharajani Jai